It all started as a joke. My wife and I like to host a lot of parties. And if you ever done cleanup after a party, you know people leave things behind. Hats and coats constantly. Scarves, purses, whatever. One time, I found a pair of prescription glasses stuck between the couch cushions. They were thick lenses too, like Velma thick. I don't know how the owner made it to the door without them, let alone drove themselves home. But anyway, a lot of the time we'll get a call the next day or the next week, someone going, hey, so I haven't seen my jacket in a while. Did I leave it at your place? But sometimes no one ever claims it. And Jenny and I, Jenny being my wife, we aren't about to call everyone who was at the party asking if they're missing whatever we found. So we just chuck it in the wooden chest we have in the closet and leave it there until someone comes looking. Recently, we had a winter party and someone left a pair of pants here. Now, it wasn't that kind of party, so I was pretty surprised to find a pair of pants lying around afterward. They were snow pants, the kind you wear over your regular clothes to keep you warm and dry. They were folded up and stored in a corner. I figured that probably somebody had shown up in them to stay warm and taken them off after they got inside. Between the warmth of the house and the warmth of the alcohol, they must have forgotten to put them back on when they left for the night. Jenny flipped through the pictures from that evening, but couldn't find any shots of anyone wearing those pants. So into the chunk they went. As Jenny was tossing them in, she commented, I bet we could clothe a whole person with what's in here. We laughed, but then I got to thinking, she was probably right. So later on, I dug through the chunk, and sure enough, in addition to the pants, we had a button-down shirt, multiple jackets, several hats, a pair of gloves, a couple of scarves, and two pairs of shoes. So, while Jenny was out of the house that night, I put the shirt on a hanger, hung the jacket over it, clipped the gloves to the sleeves, and the pants to the bottom, and wrapped the scarf around it. Then I hung the whole thing out in the hallway, plopped the hat on top, and put the shoes beneath it. The pants hung just to the ground, so that, at first glance, it really did look like someone lurking there, especially with the lights off. <laughs> I heard the door slam when Jenny got home. She started to call out a greeting, but it abruptly stopped in a shriek. I came into the hallway laughing to find Jenny standing there with a hand on the chest glaring at me. The closed dummy swung quietly to the side. Real funny, she said. You about gave me a heart attack. I'm very sorry, I said, but I was laughing much too hard for her to believe me. Yeah, you will be, she said with a mock seriousness, but she was laughing too now that she was past the initial shock. Anyway, I thought that was all extremely funny right up until I got up in the middle of the night to use the toilet. I walked into the bathroom, turned on the lights, and shouted out loud because Jenny, well, she moved the clothes dummy to the bathroom and positioned it on the toilet. From the bedroom, I heard sleepy laughter. Do you know what happens when you scare someone who's on his way to the bathroom, I demanded. Rags are under the sink. Clean up whatever you need to, Jenny called back. A lesser man would have to clean up. I have iron self-control, I told her. Is that why you screamed loudly enough to wake me up, she teased. I didn't dignify that with a response. Also, I didn't have one. So, this became a thing. Jenny and I would move the dummy around, and after a while, it wasn't even to scare each other anymore. 
We named him Albert. He was just another feature of the house after a couple of weeks. We'd move him to the kitchen, the dining room, wherever. I came home a couple of days ago to find the clothes slumped in my chair in front of the TV with one of my beers in his glove. I just grabbed another beer and took a seat on the couch. Jenny came in later and said, you're not going to move him? Well, he was here first, I shrugged. You're ridiculous, Jenny told me, and took Albert's beer. He's not going to like that, I said. Jenny laughed. What's he going to do about it? But that was a couple days ago, like I said. Yesterday, I came home to find Albert hanging by the picture window in the back of the house. His clothes were splashed with something red, and there was a dripping knife wedged in one of his gloves. It was a pretty gruesome sight, and I applauded Jenny's ingenuity. Did he get you, honey? I called. No response, obviously. She wasn't about to give up on the joke that easily. Hey, this stuff is dripping onto the floor. I said loudly enough for her to hear me wherever she was hiding. And I think it's staining the carpet. Still, nothing. So I got a towel and wiped up the blood, then took Albert's knife away from him. Whatever Jenny used really did look like blood, and I was starting to get uncomfortable. Honey, okay, you got me. Joke's over. Still, no response. So I went looking. I went through the entire house and couldn't find her anywhere. Her car was out front, but Jenny was just missing. I called her phone, but it just rang straight to voicemail. When she still hadn't shown up by midnight, I was getting a little panicked. I called a few friends, but no one had heard from her. I decided to get a few hours of sleep and then figure out what I was going to do in the morning. I laid down, turned off the lights, and I was falling asleep when I heard a slight noise in the hallway. I opened my eyes to see Jenny in the doorway. Where have you been? I started turning on the light, but my voice was dead in my throat. It wasn't Jenny. It was Albert, hanging from the doorway of my room, swaying slightly back and forth above his shoes. The knife was back in his hand. My heart was pounding. This was obviously just Jenny taking a joke too far. But when I called out for her again, and she didn't answer, my fear spiked. I took those clothes down, carried them downstairs, and even though I knew it was totally illogical, I burned them in the fireplace. I expected Jenny to come out and laugh at me once I had the fire going, or at least to scold me for stinking up the house. I don't know what they pack snow pants with, but it smells terrible when you burn it but the fire burned down to ashes, and I was still alone. I slept for a bit, and when I left for work this morning, there was still no sign of Jenny, and she still won't answer her phone. I called the police to report her missing, and they're supposed to be sending someone over to take a look around and interview me, I guess. I hope they get here soon because I just heard a noise from upstairs. And when I went up to look, the door to the walk-in closet was standing open, hanging from the bars aligned in two neat rows, where a dozen of Jenny's outfits, shirts on the hangers, pants clipped below, shoes lined up underneath. The door to the bedroom only locks from the inside, but I closed it and I used my tie to tie the knob to the banister in the hallway. I was going to leave the house, but there's a coat rack by the door, and I really don't think I lined my shoes up underneath it like that when I got home. I hope the police get here soon. Thank you everyone for playing along. If you enjoyed this narration, please click the like button, subscribe, and click the bell icon. If you have any stories you would like me to narrate, please leave them in the comments. Until next time, 
Remember, if you hear a bump in the night, don't go investigating.